Hello fellow woodshopperoos, Chad here, and I'm going to show you on today's video how you can become a better woodworker with geometry. Yes, that subject you probably told your high school teacher, I'll never use. Well, here it is, and we're going to use it right here in the shop. Now, I know that there are a lot of computer programmers out there that can show you how to do some of this geometry, such as like SketchUp, but if you're out in the field or if you're just in the shop and don't feel like walking in and turning the computer on, here's some real easy applications to help you get through some problems. So, the first one that I have to deal with many times is if I'm building a table or a counter, I'm going to want to round the edge of that corner. Now, what's the first thing we usually do? We usually go and find ourselves some can, put it on there, and draw it and cut to that line. But ones if I don't want the curve there, ones if I want it bigger, ones if I want the curve to come out here. Do I keep looking for more cans that fit that? No, I'm going to use my compass. Now, keep in mind this compass is probably not going to be highly accurate because I taped a marker to it, but you'll be able to get the ideas and the steps to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is, like I said, this is where I think I want my arc to be. And so I'm going to set my compass to that from the corner. And at the corner, I'll make a little mark here. I'll make a mark there. Now I'm going to lift the compass up and I'm going to place it on that mark. And I'm going to make a semicircle out here. I'll do the same to this side. Now I should be able to put the compass right on that X and draw the curve. Now you notice I didn't move the compass at all on this. Once I set that first measurement, the rest took care of itself. And this does a couple of things. Not only do I now have that perfect curve, but also if I draw a line from the corner through that X, I've divided this angle perfectly. So I found like my miter cut. Now, of course, this was 90, and we all know that a miter cut is 45. But once if this first angle was something like uh, 83 degrees, by using the same setup, I can find out exactly what that miter cut would be. All right, let me show you another application. This would be in the case of like this little folding book stand that I made here. And you'll notice that I have a nice like S curve going along for the legs. And let me show you how that is laid out and how I did it. And by the way, if you're interested in making this folding book stand, which is made out of one single piece of wood, not two, well, I put a link in the description below for that video. But let's show you how I do that. So I'm just gonna draw a line at any length here. And let's say that I want my S curve to be a little smaller up top and a little bigger here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to tackle this from two different points here. First, I'm just going to look at this section right here, this part of the line. And I'm going to set my compass so that the compass is wider than halfway, all right? Doesn't matter what, just randomly, just so it's wider than halfway of this part of the line. And I'll make a little semicircle out here. And I'll do the same to the other end. Okay? And I'll do the same method with this section of the line. I'll set it just somewhere more than halfway now I'm going to connect these two X points here now this already has done two things for us one it's given us the exact middle point 
of this section of the line and it makes a perfect 90 degrees in there as well. So that's another feature to this trick. Here's how I'm going to make the S curve. So I'm going to, on that X, I'm going to set my compass from the X to that first line and it should swing me over, there we go, to the second point. All right, and I'll do the same to the top one. There we are, a nice, beautiful S-curve. But let's say that that's bigger than you want. You'll want it a little softer, okay? No problem. We'll just extend these lines out. And wherever I put this on, that line, I should still hit both points. But you can see now that it's a little bit softer of a curve. So you get the idea. You can custom that any way you want. Very cool. All right, the next thing I want to show you is when I make these little stools. Now, I built a stool just like this on Scott Phillips' show, The American Wood Shop. And we had so much information that we did, we couldn't show it all in the 30-minute episode. So what I'm going to show you now is actually a tip that had to get edited out. And so you'll notice on the seat, I have these three different positions for where the legs come through. And these are each equally spaced. How do I do that? Well, again, geometry to the rescue. So let me just put a point here on the board. And I'm going to make a circle. Now, once again, without changing the setting on the comp, I'll make a mark. Well, I'll just use this. Okay. And now I'm going to pace off. Oops, put that on. I'm going to pace off with it. So I got one, two, three, four five, six, right back where I started. So you can see I have these three marks. And they're all equally spaced. And I can do a couple things with that. I can draw those out to the center. Or I can connect them. Pretty cool stuff. All right, let me show you another tip. <laughs> Let's say that I want to make an octagon. And I want those perfectly the same size, the flat spots. Well, here's how I can do that. So I have my square. And I found already the center of the square just by connecting the corners together. Now with my compass, I'll go from each corner and I'll set the compass to the middle. And I'll draw an arc. And I'll do this on all four corners. So once again, by not changing the compass setting on this, just going from the corner to the middle and making these arcs,
I now can connect these lines. And so there you go. I can cut that out and I'll wind up with a perfect octagon. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to see more videos on this subject of geometry and woodworking, leave some comments below because I have some tips on how to make a better cabinet doors, how to lay out drawers for dressers, a whole bunch of things that geometry could be applied to you and your shop. So if you'd like to see more, just let me know. On behalf of myself and Safety Dan, hey. we want to thank you for watching and go dance now, people.